Good morning. Uh, I will present the work uh, of the Portuguese football team, as was mentioned earlier. Uh, the Junta de Colonização Interna, which is uh, we, we mentioned further as GCI, uh, which can be roughly translated as International uh, Internal Colonization Board, was created in 1936. And in 1942, it reorganized its services, being its last legal scheme approved in 1960. Hmm. It is possible to divide the GC action in two phases. The first phase, which started since the end of the 1930s, during which both the Junta Autónoma de Hidráulica Agrícola, Autonomous Board of Agricultural Hydraulics, uh, and the GCI, GCI were created. These two stage uh, agencies articulated their administrative competences between themselves. The first would irrigate the lands that divided and expropriation will be colonized by the later. Historically, this phase corresponds to the political consideration of the alliance between the technical productivist colonization targeting the macroeconomic policy and a social reformist colonization aimed at improving people's living conditions and pacifying the population. This project, which failed due to the lack of support from the large landowners, led in the 40s to the colonization of the dry southern land through small works of agricultural hydraulics carried out directly by the GCI. Consequently, a review of GCI's collection was necessary leading to a second stage characterized by the technologization of colonizing ideology, which occurred simultaneously with the development of a new settlement model within the GCI, which continued to cover the baldios, which is the Portuguese word for common land, um, baldios of the north and the large farms of the south, now through a program developed accordingly to a predominantly social rationality structured from the knowledge deepened in the field of agronomy. Based on the idea that it is fundamental to maintain and defend the traditional basis of nationality, the settlers were transformed into farmers, like those who already existed in Portugal, and had to share an integrated community, creating a cohesive settlement. Simultaneously, the regime of Casal, it's the singular or Casage, which is the plural word, uh, which means in Portuguese the conjunction of the, of the individual lot and the built elements. Uh, this regime implied that each family of settlers had an unable and indivisible piece of land, which turned them into landowners. In this perspective, the GCI, following the policy of the Estado Novo regime, aims to contradict the proletarian pretensions and the collective political actions. The profile of the settler resulted from the selection made by the GCI, which defined their qualities. To be head of a rural family, healthy, strong, and defender of the nationality. They also should be orderly, good workers, sober, and well governed. These qualities allow to maintain the harmony and unity in the settlements. Between 1937 and 1954, the most representative settler was the agricultural salariate, father of at least one child and aged between 30 and 34 years. The small farmer who did not have enough assets to support the household was less representative. From 1946, the preference selection criteria are indistinctively attributed to all those who reside in the parish of the colony or in the neighboring parishes and that had experience of working in irrigated lands when applicable. In 1954, the professional residential criteria was abolished while the irrigation experience criteria is maintained. They also start to prefer large families and maintain the attribution of the lot to the men, preferably of Portuguese nationality, which is understood as the head of the family with moral suitability and with less than 30 years old. Since the beginning of the GCI action, the objective in the South was to create small properties linked to the large existing latifundia, aiming to produce cereals. The settlers 
who are moved from the north to the south in order to counteract the growing number of salary and consequent social tensions they provoked, trying by that way to avoid the proletariat movement. The model followed by the GCI for the settlement of agricultural colonies must be understood in two dimensions, the polit political, ideological, and the technical or technical scientific. The Italian and Spanish experiences were the main sources of analysis for the Portuguese model. However, it, will, it should be noted that in comparison with these two countries, both in terms of land occupied and number of settlements, the work carried out was extremely reduced. Nonetheless, the colony of Pegoins was an example of the propagandas of Salazar's regime, spreading the idea of the national resurgence. The president of the GCI between 41 and 48, José Pereira Caldas, made a, a study trip to Italy in 1937, from which resulted a report in which the influence of the Bonifig Italian is assumed at several levels, with relevance to the idea of property sharing combined with large hydraulic works. Later, in the 1960s, the publication of the architects Vasco Lobo and Alfredo da Matantunes presented drawings of the houses promoted by the Spanish INC, referring to examples of minimum housing obtained from a single type of plans. And from Italy, Reforma Fundiaria di Puglia and Lucania, justifying the inclusion of this last case by its interest in applying to more elaborate programs, and not by what it represents as an architectural proposal. The GCI promotes a total of seven new or reorganized colonies, Milagres, Martin Rey, Pegois, Gafanha, Barroso, Alvão, and Boiosa, which were designed and built between 1936 and 1960 under the policies of internal, in, internal colonization determined by the Estado Novo in order to promote this project of agrarian reform. After 1960, GCI completed only a few adaptation projects in the colonies built in the previous period. Although they were developed under the guidance of an agrarian policy that remained faithful to its social principles along this period, the civilization of Baldios of the north and avoid proletary movements for the great properties of the south, the seven mm -hmm. agricultural colonies were not concluded accordingly to the predefined global project. The design of these colonies result from a prolonged, prolonged action constantly influenced by a variety of events and transformations that occur in the different political and economic contexts and under the disciplinary debate of architecture and urbanism of that period. The project, the projects and the constructions were thus developed from settlement and architectural models that were adapted accordingly to the diverse visions and programs of the, ter the rural territory exploitation occurring during this period. The early projects and constructions concerning the reorganization of the existing Milox colony <coughs> and of the new Martin Ray colony constitute a dispersed but orderly settlement pattern in which the Kazais are distributed in the colonies of Asia. The base model used on these colonies results from the design optimization of the traditional Kazal, reflecting a, polit a political and methodological thinking centered on the experimental resolution of the agricultural productivity and the economic autonomy of the family. In the colonies of Pegoins and Gafanha, it was applied the same model of dispersed settlement of Miracles and Martigre. Nevertheless, the studies regarding the agronomic aspects are dependent, but again with the objective of studying the possibility of providing farms capable of guaranteeing the self-sufficiency of the settling family. The design of these colonies follows strictly functional principles which deal with the suitability of the soil, determination of the housing and the properties metrics and to the criteria of achieving the essentiality and efficiency of, pri of the primary infrastructure's organization. In the case of the agricultural colonies of Peros, Alvão and Boliosa, was adopted a concentrated settlement model 
that privileged the global solutions, which was considered more adventurous regarding the use and the proximity of the collective services. By adopting this type of solution, the casais of these colonies were thus constituted by several parcels which were organized to form more compact settlements. The settlement scheme was more complex and the design of their structures was organized in order to define special systems constituted by streets and squares in order to reinforce the global idea and to promote the community environment. The understanding of the place and of the physical support <coughs> constitutes one of the fundamental premises of the definition of the colonies' design and the metrics of their settlements. In general, all GCI colonies reveal the concern for the optimal location of the various settlements in order to ensure that their accessibility, their proximity to the core of the existing village, and at the same time to the land with higher agricultural capacity, or even to achieve more favorable sun exposure conditions. Further, special concern was paid to the topography in parallel with the selection of sites that enhance the relation of the settlements in the landscape. This concern, which is practically visible in the Minho and Trazos Montes colonies, reveals not only a great capacity for understanding and taking advantage of the site's topographical characteristics, but also there, there was a conscious intention of building a landscape. The buildings of the agricultural colonies represent, present an architectural diversity resulting not only from the renovation of the architectural premises between the design and their construction works, but also from the application of principles which have taken into account the regional specificities and the site particular conditions. In addition to taking into account the issues related with the expression, organization and architectural design, the project and solutions take advantage of the use of materials and construction techniques from the region with the objective of reducing costs and ensuring the best quality of construction. Regarding the definition of dwellings minimum areas, the study by Vasco Lobo and Alfredo da Mata Antunes reported the results of the 1957 Colón meeting of the Commission de Logement Familial, where delegates from 12 countries, including Portugal, <coughs> discussed this subject. The study presented some examples recording to the reports provided, namely, namely from the Belgian case and from the case of Cologne in Germany. However, this had not practical consequences in the colonies. In the colony of Milac, what was <coughs> in the colony of Milac was used this late single family house model, and the global settlement results essentially from the juxtaposition of volumes facing a courtyard where the dwelling, the agricultural annexes, and the sanitary facilities are inserted. In Martin Ray, the model remains almost identical to these ones. The courtyard prevails as the element which structures the build complex. However, its connection with the access gate is enhanced by the introduction of a shed. Apart from the colony of Bolhosa, where the casais were organized in semi-detached and pro buildings, also in the colonies of Pegões, Gafanha, Alvão, and Barroso, the model adopted for the agricultural settlement was the detached single family house. In these colonies, and differently to Milac and Martin Ray, the ensemble is no longer designed and built uniquely and exclusively to fulfill the needs directly associated with its function. In fact, in the colonies of Pegões, Barroso, and Boilhosa, the housing and agricultural dependencies are grouped and inserted in a single volumetric element, allowing to rationalize the composition and simultaneously giving it a greater representativeness from the architectural and social point of view. Regarding the public buildings, the most significant investment was done in the second phase, after the stabilization of the principles of location and construction of the casage. Several public buildings were then built, whether for technical, medical, social or religious services, or for the storage and processing of the agricultural products. In this phase, in which the search for new architectural expressions is particularly remarkable, 
aiming to find the alleged national architecture, the introduction of these public buildings aims to provide the colonies with collective services which are essential to reinforce the sense of community and the social cohesion of their population. It is possible to point out the causes of the abandonment of the colonies, the deviation from the established rules of behavior, for example, the irregular behavior in private life, which leads to expulsion, internal conflicts between settlers of the same colony, inability to manage the casal, the difficulty of the settlers to adapt themselves to the operating standards imposed by GCI, financial difficulties and execution of other paid activities, leading to the voluntary abandonment. In the 1960s, the agricultural colonies were not immune to the immigration growth. The settlement's departure was initially repressed, being later on tolerated if the rest of the family remained in the colony. But in truth, many of the settlers just did not fit and run from the colonies. And of course, this will be a topical to deal with uh, in the future. Thank you very much.